When Florida State law professor Dan Markell was murdered in 2014, he was in the middle of a nasty custody battle with his wife, Wendy Adelson, who is the daughter of a prominent and very wealthy South Florida family. Markell was shot in his driveway. His wife, who was an obvious potential suspect, had an alibi. Eventually, investigators arrested and tried this couple, Catherine McManawa and Sigfredo Garcia. Prosecutors believe Garcia killed Markell for the Adelson family and that McManawa set it all up. She wasn't involved. She doesn't have the answers that people want her to have. At trial, Catherine McManawa denied knowing anything about the murder. Did you have anything to do with the murder of Don Markell? No, ma'am. But prosecutors believe that McBanawa is the connection between Garcia, the trigger man, and the Adelson family because she was previously in a relationship with Wendy Adelson's brother, Charlie, who had even once joked about hiring a hitman to kill Dan Markell. Do you ever joke about he looked into hiring a hitman, but buying you a TV as a divorce present would be cheaper? He did make that joke. The jury found Garcia guilty of murder, but couldn't come to a unanimous decision on Catherine McBanawa. If McBanawa wasn't involved, Charlie Adelson would have had to have hired Garcia on his own, which prosecutors say is unlikely because they didn't know each other. I am 100% convinced that Charlie Adelson somehow contacted Sigfredo Garcia without letting Catherine know. Part of that deal was Charles Adelson breaking up with Catherine so that Sigfredo could get back the woman that he loved so much. None of the Adelsons, who prosecutors clearly believe were involved, have yet been charged in Dan Markell's murder. Catherine McBanawa, meanwhile, remains in jail, waiting her retrial. And that last part, this is a murder for hire. That is what prosecutors are saying. But they're saying the people that hired him haven't been charged. Think about that for a second. Murder for hire, but the people who hired the murderer haven't been charged yet. Why is that? I, it still puzzles me, but Catherine McVanua uh, is getting ready for her retrial. Let's bring in our special guest. Join us to talk about the case in Tallahassee, Florida. Reporter for WTXL, Jada Williams is with us. And in Redwood City, California, Dan Markell's friend, Jason Solomon. Welcome to you both. Uh, Jada, so... Any, has there been any movement towards charging the Adelsons? Anything new on that front? I don't know if it's going to be Donna, the, the, the mother. I don't know if it's going to be Charlie, the son, or Harvey. I don't, I don't know who. But has anyone in this alleged murder-for-hire plot uh, who allegedly hired the murderers uh, been charged or going to be charged here? Well, Vinny, if Adelson is the net last name right now, there are no movements whatsoever with the Adelson family. Catherine McVanawa was in court today. Her court trial has been pushed back. It was supposed to be this summer. It will be October. And as the prosecution has continued to say, they're focused more on getting to Sigfredo Garcia, Catherine McVanawa, before we can even maybe hear anything about the Adelson family. Yeah, I, uh, Jason Solomon, um... You're also a, a lawyer. You understand how this system works. But to me, this is not working. This, uh, this, uh, this puzzles me, Jason. Does it puzzle you as well that the, the people who allegedly hired uh, the killers who killed your friend have not been charged? Well, yes and no, Vinny, and I appreciate both of your attention to continuing to cover this, this, this tragic case. Um, I think it's quite possible, even likely, uh, that the prosecutors are following a careful strategy of going after the lower level, mid level people in this conspiracy to murder Dan Markell uh, with the hope that they will then flip, that they will then cooperate with the prosecution um, against the people who hired them. So I think that is the most likely scenario. There are a few other possibilities that are not good, and that is the possibility that. The, prosec the prosecutors, uh, Jack Campbell and, and Georgia Kappelman in Tallahassee, are scared of these Adelsons hiring high-priced lawyers, as they no doubt will, and, you know, the state attorney worried that they won't successfully convict them. I think they're wrong to be worried about that. The evidence is overwhelming against particularly Charlie, the brother-in-law, and Donna, the mother-in-law. They'll convict them, and I hope after this Magbanawa trial, they'll go after them. But if they don't, 
you know, then that's why we need people in Tallahassee, people in Florida, people across the country to continue to shine a light on this case to make sure that the state attorney goes after them. And if the state attorney doesn't, maybe some other uh, entity in Florida, like the attorney general, has to take over the case the way the attorney general did in Minnesota in the George Floyd case. Absolutely. Uh, Jada, so Catherine McBannon, at that first trial, she took the witness stand. She, she testified and, and she, she talked about not knowing anything about this murder plot. Yeah, she, she took the stand and she said, look, I dated the guy, weird things happened, but I have no idea about what's going on. She said she had no idea who Dan Markell was. She had no idea what was happening. And to this day, she continues to maintain her innocence throughout the entire ordeal. And she's still locked up, right? She is. She is still in the Leon County Detention Facility here in Tallahassee, Florida. So, Jason, this is where I see there, there's, a, there's a problem for prosecutors. They tried to get Catherine McBanua to, to take a deal. But at this point, could you even use her testimony if she has already testified under oath that she was not a part of this and has no information about the murder of, of Dan? I think you're right. I think it may be problematic. Um, for them to use McBonough's testimony. She lied on the stand, obviously. She perjured herself. There's overwhelming evidence that she was involved. There's phone records. She got checks from the mother-in-law, Donald Adelson's dental practice, payroll-type checks, as if she worked there, but she didn't work there. Um, so, and we saw the def her defense lawyers on your segment earlier making the claim that somehow maybe Charlie Adelson knew Garcia directly. That's ridiculous. There are all kinds of cell phone records, uh, and there's no evidence um, that they knew each other directly. So it may be that the prosecutors are waiting to see if maybe Garcia himself uh, might uh, might cooperate. That's possible. Or they just think that it's better to try Magbanawa and the Adelson separately, and that could be quite reasonable as well. But again, we just want to make sure that they don't turn around after this Magbanawa trial and say, oh, well, we've already spent a lot of time and taxpayer dollars on this case. we got to move on to other cases. No, that's just unacceptable. There is not justice in this case unless we go after the Adelsons. Jack Campbell and Georgia Kaplan, the prosecutors, can make this a crowning achievement of their careers or they can make it a dark stain on their careers. It's up to them. And it's up to them. Yeah. Jada, when we look at the relationships, Catherine McBanawa, she was involved with Charlie Adelson, right? She wasn't she uh, like a shot girl or something at, at one of the clubs, and Charlie would pull up in his fancy red convertible sports car. Yeah, and that's something that the prosecution really harped on was that he was this fancy guy. He had all of the nice, fancy, expensive cars. She worked at this high-profile Miami bar as a shot girl, and then out of nowhere, she ended up working for the family dentist practice and the prosecution even said that while her name ended up on the payroll they called witnesses who said they never knew of her as a co-worker they knew of her as charlie's girlfriend at the time yeah a note to self do not go to a dental practice that hires a shot girl uh to to, to i mean unless she's trained to do it i mean see, it makes no sense it makes no sense but unbelievably, we've got a, a retrial coming up. Jada Williams, uh, great to catch up with you. Uh, Jason Solomon, uh, appreciate you coming on the program, and, and I hope you'll join us again as we get ready for this trial and hopefully another trial down the road. All right, folks. Thanks, Vinny. As uh, Jada reported, there is another trial date. Here we go. October 4th. Mark that date, folks. October 4th, the retrial of Catherine McBanawa. And we'll see if they can convince 12 people beyond any and all reasonable doubt.